Good evening everyone, in this video I want to talk to you about how to play against Katarina in an online environment. Uh, I know there were a couple of videos we were going to make uh, before this, uh, and the reason I decided to sneak this in today is basically it's my birthday, and so I want to uh, go outside and do something fun in the real world today. And Katarina is an old maid of mine from the arcade days, so I thought uh, you know I can make a guide on how to deal with her without having to spend a couple of hours doing research on correct frame data and damage numbers and stuff, because I pretty much know uh, everything there is to know about her all already. Now, um, Katarina is a character that I know a lot of people uh, are super frustrated with and that they don't like to fight against online, so I hope this guy is going to be uh, very useful anyway. And once we're done with this, I'm going to go uh, back into my uh, schedule of doing, you know, the requested characters like Law, King, uh, Eddie and Chloe. Uh, so let's start talking about uh, Katarina and why she's uh, frustrating. Well, Honestly, when you start playing Katarina, one thing you'll notice is that she actually has very generic tools overall. It's very, very simple, basic Tekken tools, uh, but she just has that coupled with some really chunky and really frustrating knockdown lows. And then her 11 frame uh, counter hit uh, standing four, her magic four, just happens to be one of the uh, strongest uh, magic force in the history of Tekken. So it is a bog standard 11 frame counter hit high, but it's just a very powerful, very consistent version of one. And so it tends to come out a lot. Uh, and it, when you couple this with the fact that there is uh, lag associated with playing the game online, uh, her lows become uh, more difficult to react to, and so she can become uh, very difficult to play against um, in the online environment. Uh, now one thing that I've mentioned in the beginning of all my tutorials, uh, sort of uh, how to beat tutorials so far, is uh, that uh, Horang and Paul are strong characters in this game. They're actually very, very good. And so uh, if you're losing to one of these characters, it doesn't necessarily mean that you're playing uh, against somebody using you know, cheap, exploitative tools. It might just be that they're using a strong character and playing good Tekken. Uh, Katarina is also a strong character. Uh, she's actually like mid to upper mid tier according to most people. I honestly think she's pretty strong. Uh, but she does have a player base of people uh, where I think people who like to rely on big lows, people who like to spam, you know, certain attacks are overrepresented. There is um, a sort of uh, a big community of sort of scrubby players who gravitate towards Katarina because she's easy to use and because she has, you know, the big damage. And so that is something, you know, as a, a person who plays a lot of Katarina, I, I obviously see that. That's absolutely true. Uh, but there's nothing like uh, demonic or unfair about her. It's just uh, you need to know how to navigate through some of these specific tools. So let's uh, start talking a little bit about them. Uh, so when we're talking about Katarina's lows, I guess it might be a good place to start. Basically, she has five big lows. Uh, Katarina's five big lows that you need to know about. Three of them are useful and are going to come out a lot even when you're playing against uh, good players. Two of them are very situational and uh, basically almost never see use in a high level competitive play, but you will run into them a lot in the lower ranks. So if we start with the useful ones, the, the lows that I consider to be dangerous at any level of play, uh, down back three, uh, her slide shoot is probably like the most important one and so this move I think should be considered uh, in the same family with moves like uh, Leo's uh, Falling Leaf or Demolition Man from Paul uh, they are unseeable knockdown lows that you can use to uh, break down an opponent who's playing uh, defensively and uh, you know create a, a favorable situation because you've knocked your opponent down you've dealt damage and now you're able to apply Oki and so on this move is slow enough that uh, you will occasionally be able to react to it visually, but it is not easy. It is in that sort of region where it is difficult. So it is actually a worse move than something like Demolition Man, which you would never be able to react to unless it was telegraphed because it came out of, you know, some sort of movement behavior from your opponent, right? Uh, and so the only way to deal with this move is the same way you would deal with any big uh, unseeable-ish knockdown low from an opponent. Uh, when you think uh, there is a risk of this move coming out, you can try to block and launch punish it, but uh, the easiest and safest way to deal with it is to apply uh, fast mids that will uh, force your opponent to stand back up and keep him honest. And because uh, the move is relatively slow and a move like, you know, standard down forward one for most characters is much, much faster, even when you're at a frame uh, disadvantage, you are going to be able to interrupt the slide shoot with your down forward one. So there's no specific way of dealing with this move easily. It's just one of those moves that, you know, uh, any character has a couple of, you know, knockdown lows that are dangerous. And so you just got to be aware of those. 
and that's also the reason why I put this move in sort of the good category because it is a uh, a powerful tool for Katarina. It is her like main knockdown. Oh, it's got good tracking. Uh, and uh, one thing to be aware of with this move is that when you are at the wall, uh, we've talked about this in previous videos, but when you are at the wall uh, against Katarina, if you go to the wall here, if you're in this situation with Katarina where you're at the wall, maybe she comboed you to the wall or knocked you down near the wall, uh, you need to be very, very scared of a slide shoot because if she connects with it, her up back four, which is this move, uh, is completely guaranteed and so you can see that deals a total of uh, 24 and then 25 so that's uh, what 49 damage that's a, a huge uh, chunk of guaranteed damage meaning that this move becomes exceptionally dangerous when you're at the wall so if you get uh, my big tip here is you know be aware that there is a large uh, risk of this move showing up when you're near the wall and also be aware that if you get hit by it this up back four is guaranteed so there's no need for you to try and like maneuver in a way that you deal with this uh, up back four just eat it be aware that it's going to be a guaranteed damage and then you know uh, stand back up and regain your composure so that's it for that move uh, the next move uh, I want to talk about is uh, her Toucan Tail, which is uh, a new addition for uh, FR. This move is fantastic uh, for one reason, it's got amazing range, right? So you look at this and there are very few characters who at this range we're at right now could apply um, a, a low that is actually going to hit and be in range, but Toucan Tail is one of them. You can see the range is absolutely massive. It's actually kind of comparable to like down three from Elisa where she flies across the floor with her jetpacks. Uh, and it also has good crush properties. Now this move is slow-ish and punishable, but it's got that massive range and it is actually really easy to apply for Katarina uh, from a range to rack up damage. When she's applied the Toucan Tail, she can uh, stay in full crouch. So one thing you'll see a lot is they will do this and then they will start applying uh, full crouch uh, down forward uh, force from crouch. Uh, so just be aware that that is a likely follow up. But again, this is just a, a move that you have to try and predict and react to and block. Uh, it's got linearity associated with it. So when you're in a space that position and you feel like your opponent might be abusing this, uh, you can use uh, sideways movement to try and outmaneuver it. But you need to be aware that it actually has some half decent tracking um, she will sort of move along a little bit with her opponent and so I routinely hit people who are sidewalking with this move and so I would recommend that you try and deal with it by blocking or outranging it by using uh, Korean backdash cancels which is not super easy granted okay uh, the next sort of usable and dangerous low from Katarina we already mentioned it once is her uh, full crouch uh, down forward four which is this move the reason this move is dangerous is that it is very fast, it does a lot of damage and uh, because uh, it doesn't knock the opponent down or anything, she can actually you know, chain them together and apply them in sequence like this. There are a couple of situations where Katarina will end up in a full crouch position next to you. Uh, such as you know applying the token tail and staying in crouch uh, and if you're playing you know against a decent Katarina player this guide is for you know dealing with people who are not decent Katarina players but people who are exploiting certain tools right so you will almost never see them do this but one option she has that is cool for uh, slightly more advanced Katarina players is that uh, after a, uh, a spin or in the middle of a combo she can do stuff like this and I didn't do it properly let's show it again uh, yeah, and she can cancel uh, some of her moves, any move that goes in the Harrier, into full crouch by uh, pressing down back, right? So she will use that to create uh, Oki mix-ups and stuff, but that's kind of rare. Most of the time what you're going to end up, uh, you know, facing uh, is people, you know, just ducking in your face and they're going to start applying these or using them after a Toucan Tail. Um, and again, if you get hit by one of these, be aware that it is very likely that uh, more of them are going to show up. But she has, uh, you know, strong mid mix-ups for this move, like her while standing too, so it's very dangerous. So again, these three moves that I've uh, mentioned right now, uh, two can tail, uh, sorry, two can tail, uh, full crouch down forward four, slide shoot, are all usable good lows. And so there's no like easy way to get around them, right? You have to deal with them the same way you would deal with any powerful low from any character. And so that's a reason uh, this character is frustrating, but it's also a reason why those moves are actually kind of good. Uh, and if you are a Katarina player, you should be applying them. But be aware that when your opponent does um, properly uh, predict them uh, and interrupt you uh, or uh, crush you know them with a hop kick or something, 
or low block them obviously you're gonna get launched and so it's a high risk uh, high reward kind of situation and so when you're playing against Katarina be aware that she is taking a large risk when she is doing these moves and if you are able to block them you will collect uh, a launch punish so now let's move on to the uh, 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 moves that I don't think are very good in terms of lows from Katarina, but that you're still going to see come out a lot when you play against her online. The first one and the most important one, I'm sure you're aware, is the uh, down back four. This is Katarina's version of a generic snake edge. This exists on a lot of characters. It's very frustrating to face online uh, because uh, basically the move is designed to be reactable. So you're supposed to be able to see the animation, block it low and launch every time. But because of lag, because uh, maybe you're not super experienced with blocking big lows in Tekken, maybe you aren't focused, it could be any kind of situation. This move will hit and then your opponent is going to create a, a massive combo. Especially with Katarina, she actually has uh, a snake edge that happens to yield uh, very large damage. You see right there with just a basic combo 88. So it is um, very dangerous um, to face. And so you just got to be aware that this move, uh, when you face it even online, is seeable and you can react to it and block it. And so my biggest tip that I want to give you here when it comes to this move is that if you can't see it, then try to listen to it. Uh, that's a very important tip when it comes to blocking uh, big lows in Tekken. If you listen to Katarina's voice when I do this move, she goes, who, right? She's going to do the exact same voice cue, the exact same who, every single time she does this move. And she's never going to say uh, anything else. And she's never not going to say anything. This audio cue always exists there. And this is uh, because um, you can actually look up the science on this. I've read a little bit about it. But it turns out that human beings apparently react to information from their ears slightly quicker uh, than they react to uh, visual information to their eyes. Uh, and so uh, what that uh, ends up meaning is that when it's difficult to see this move You can actually react a little bit faster if you learn how to instinctively block when you hear that sound And this is something that the developers of Tekken are obviously very, uh, very aware of Because if you look at big lows like this, if you look at Snake Edge from Brian, uh, from Lily, uh, from Xiaoyu, from Dragunov They all have one of these very distinct uh, audio cues associated with the move and so one big tip uh, for me is go into practice mode, uh, set your opponent to do this move, and then another move that is uh, not this move, maybe some sort of mid that can sort of create a mix up with it. And then you know set the opponent to do like this move 50% of the time, and the other move 50% of the time, or even less. And then train yourself to stand block uh, all the moves that isn't the snake edge, and then listen for the snake edge. You can even try cl uh, closing your eyes. And as soon as you hear that sound, uh, press down back. And when you've done that and you've practiced that a lot, it becomes so much easier to do this. Um, when you say that a move like this is seeable, but you think, well, I can't see it. I'm eating it and I can't react to it. Is it because of lag? What is it? You need to know that basically any human being can see it. It's just uh, that experience is also a factor and focus is a factor. Uh, and so if you've been drinking any amount of alcohol or maybe you've underslept, maybe it's very late at night or whatever, uh, this becomes uh, a lot harder to do uh, for all players. And so uh, I recommend uh, when you really want to rank up in Tekken and you really don't want to eat big lows and stuff like this, especially when you're playing in the low ranks where people aren't really going to respect their opponent, they're just going to try and steal wins if they can. Uh, try to be well re rested, relaxed, try and stay calm is a very important factor. You know, as soon as you get angry in Tekken, your reaction time goes out the window and then they can just do this move as much as they want. Um, but yeah, uh, listening to this move is a very big uh, tip, but it's uh, a very dangerous move to use for Katarina and good players are not going to rely on it, but you do see it a lot in the lower ranks. Uh, the next move I want to mention is Harrier 3. Uh, this is another move that you see a lot. Uh, this move has situational use even in uh, uh, you know higher levels of play because it can be used to create like mix-ups for Oki and stuff. But as you can see, it comes out of Harrier, which means that it is uh, telegraphed, and you can visually react to this. Uh, it is going to hit uh, grounded opponents, so be aware of that. Uh, but this is just something again that you need to uh, visually react to and block. Before uh, FR, Katarina did not really have a strong mix-up for this move because um, all of her other uh, moves, all of her mids from this stance, like Harrier 2 and Harrier 4, uh, were punishable mids. So 
you could just stand around and wait for Katarina to do Harrier Stance, uh, her Harrier, st Harrier, Harrier Stance move. If it was the low, you could visually react to and block it. If it was one of the mids, you could uh, block punish them. And if she used, uh, you know, the one, which is her only high, you could just block that and then uh, maybe an attempt to duck it. So. Uh, she didn't really have a strong mix-up built into her Harrier stance, but they changed that in FR so that she does now. Uh, she has access to her uh, up for th uh, her four for three uh, from Harrier, and this is like the strong mid mix-up she has for this low. And so uh, the way you deal with the stance is when you see it, you always stand block until you actually see the animation of the Harrier three when she jumps jumps up into the air like this and starts spinning. That's when you start blocking low. If you preemptively uh, preemptively block low against this move, uh, you are liable to eat uh, a mid like you know up for three. So. It is uh, dangerous, uh, but be aware also that when you're playing in the low ranks uh, against an exploiting Katarina who just wants to win whatever you know uh, it takes, the low is extremely likely to come out over any kind of mid mix-up because you might even be playing against a, a player who doesn't really understand the concept of mixing up lows with mids and stuff like that. When you see the stance, uh, the three, the knockdown low, is very likely. Uh, that's simply the nature of like low rank play uh, in the online environment these days. All right, uh, the final thing I'm just gonna mention here in the low section, those are Katarina's big five lows. If you block them, launch her. She has a final one that you see sometimes, which is down for 3-3, three, three, which is this mid into a low. Very telegraphed because of the mid, and so you can easily react to this. Uh, if you're playing against a decent Katarina player, they will do this sometimes. She can actually cancel the second uh, hit. And uh, another thing which is interesting about this, which is why I think the move is pretty cool, is you can, uh, I talked about audio cues earlier, she actually still does the audio cue for this move, right? If you cancel, if you listen, she still does it, uh, meaning that even if you listen for this move, it becomes uh, difficult to know what she's going to do. And so uh, you basically do not need to worry about this because I never see like really low level players uh, use this, but if you play at a slightly higher rank, you might see people do this, uh, cancel it, and then uh, they can do something like a mid, right? But even in those cases, it is actually uh, possible to preemptively duck looking for the uh, uh, low, visually confirm that she canceled, and then stand back up and block. So you can deal with this. It's not like, a, it's just to confuse you, but it's not like uh, it's unbeatable or anything, you know? Uh, Alright, so we talked a little bit about her lows there. Uh, I know uh, dealing with snake gauges online can be super frustrating, but it, you know, it, whether it's Dragonov or Lily or Elisa or Xiaoyu or Feng uh, or Brian or whoever is applying them, it's the same concept every time. You just need to train to see them and sort of try and get a feel for when uh, a player is scared and when they're going to start relying on a move like this. Uh, the only uh, character in the game who applies a, un an, an unseeable uh, low launcher uh, like in the shape of this is Kuma and Panda and uh, those characters are extremely rare and you basically never see them so it's all about uh, training yourself to see them and then there are stuff like you know Xiaoyu's rage drive and stuff but that's you know broken. Uh, Alright so the next thing we need to talk about and the next big thing about Katarina is counter hits. Uh, she has two commonly used uh, counter hit tools that are uh, strong. Uh, she has a couple more, but we don't need to talk about those in this very basic sort of um, uh, run through. Uh, the first one and the main one is uh, her Nimble Cutter, which is her uh, 444, or just the 4-4, the, four four, the two hits. You can do two hits or three hits. This is an 11 frame high damage counter hit move that is going to lead to uh, big damage for Katarina if you eat it. And so for this reason, you need to be aware that when Katarina is uh, spamming you with fast tools like this, at any time she could try and explode into a, a nimble cutter uh, to look for the um, uh, counter hit. And so when you're up against her like this, uh, be very careful uh, about uh, sticking moves out when Katarina has connected with a basic poke like one or down forward one and she has a slight frame advantage because that's a, a good situation for her to try and hit you with a counter hit move. Uh, be very careful uh, about sticking out moves when you've blocked a standing one because that's a move that is slightly plus on block as would most um, you know one jabs. 
Uh, and then be aware that if you're gonna try and interrupt Katarina when she's applying a lot of offense like this up close, uh, try to use a fast, uh, fa as fast a move as possible. Try and interrupt her with something like down jabs. Down jabs are amazing in this situation because not only is it extremely fast, allowing her to, you to interrupt a lot of Katarina's uh, options, it's also a high crush move. And um, nimble cutter, the first hit is actually a high, meaning that this move is duckable. You need to be fast, however, because the second hit is mid, so it's kind of hard to sort of like duck and launch punish this, although that's very possible, good players do it all the time, but uh, it is very possible to use a crush move like a down jab uh, to uh, go under the first hit of Nimble Cutter. Uh, but this is just uh, an issue of not being too trigger happy and actually taking your time against Katarina and being patient against her. Because uh, if you just block this string, uh, there's not really anything she can do to you, you know, there's no lows or anything. Uh, and then the other thing that is really important about this string is that when Katarina is looking for counter hits, she's always going to do two hits or three hits. It's typically three hits. And so uh, when you eat those three hits, you might think, okay, uh, that move is safe, but it is, excuse me, minus on block, meaning that it's my turn to attack. You try and stick out a move, and then Katarina finishes the string and does the last uh, performs the last two hits. As you can see, the last two hits of this string, they do 46 damage, and that's a natural combo. If you eat that, you're going to eat that 46 damage guaranteed, and it's huge and very frustrating. Meaning that when you eat the first hits, the first two or three hits of Nimble Cutter, don't try and interrupt her with something, or, or don't try and like take momentum in the game. Uh, it's much, much uh, safer to just do a backdash and chill. Uh, because otherwise you're liable to get hit by the last two hits. The fourth hit, which is by far the slowest hit of the string, if you look one, two, three, four, that fourth hit is the slowest hit of the string and a high. Meaning that if you think that Katarina is going to uh, apply the entire five hits of the string, ducking the fourth hit is a very solid option. You have more than enough time to duck and launch Punisher if you manage to do that. But, you know, maybe uh, she doesn't finish the string, maybe she does something else, and just randomly ducking can be dangerous. So that's for when you have an actual read. That might be a very good idea, but my biggest tip is just block the whole thing, be patient, block all five hits, and now you've eaten zero damage. Yes, you didn't, you know, outmaneuver her or create a launch or anything, but you took zero damage, uh, which is good, uh, which is uh, great. So that's uh, the best option when she's applying this move a lot, right? Uh, the second uh, good counter hit move that Katarina applies is her down forward four. Uh, this is a fast mid and the reason it's important is because it is a mid. And so this move is uh, not applied a whole lot by bad players, but it is applied in one very specific situation that I'm going to teach you now. And this is very important. And if you didn't know about it, it's going to help you against Katarina a lot online. Katarina has a string known as straight rush, which looks like this. It is her one one two. Uh, this uh, final hit of the 1-1-2 gives her a uh, massive frame advantage on block. It's kind of rare to just have a move like that that you can apply out of a jab that's going to give you massive frame advantage on uh, block, but Katarina has it. A lot of people don't know about the massive frame advantage. Uh, I think last time I checked it was like plus 7. Uh, I'm sorry if that's wrong, I'm pretty sure it's plus 7, which is huge. And so when she applies this and you block, uh, very commonly she's going to go straight into either uh, a nimble cutter or down foot 4, looking for that counter hit. She has more than enough time to apply the slightly slower uh, move, which is the down foot 4, but this is also a mid, which has a lot of added benefits. So this is the most commonly used move after uh, straight rush gets blocked. And so what you need to remember is when you see this move, one one two. Uh, you you should never press a button. You, you need to keep blocking. Uh, this is not a uh, this is a safe move. So even if you block the follow up like this, you don't get a punish. But again, it's just a question of blocking the three hits and then blocking the counter hit move as well. You haven't uh, dealt damage to your opponent, but you've also eaten zero damage. You've taken no damage or zero damage. I'm sorry. I know I mispronounced the uh, the Z sound a lot in English. Uh, and so that's very very important. And so uh, look at her hands right now. She's gonna do one one two She switches her hand and she does a palm thrust with her uh, other hand, right? That's the visual cue and that's when you need to chill and not press a button 
Now, as you probably noticed, because I've done this string a couple of times, is that the final hit is a high, meaning that you can duck this string, and uh, that is definitely something you can attempt, and then you can get a launch punish, but uh, the reason it's dangerous is that Katarina has a mix-up. She has 1-1-1. One, one, one. That final hit is actually a very chunky mid. And so, uh, you need to be aware that you can't just duck this uh, all the time, because if she applies the 1-1-1 one, one, one instead, you're just going to eat the mid. So your best option, in my opinion, is to just stay blocking. It's kind of like, uh, you know, we talked about Firecracker with Horong in the previous video. Same thing with this string, same thing with this string. You can attempt to uh, uh, duck a high and get your launch, but it's risky. But as long as you just stay blocking and walk backwards like this, she's gonna deal no damage to you. And that's very good. Because when Katarina can't apply gimmicks like, you know, straight, ru uh, straight rush into down forward four, when she can't apply counters with Nimble Cutter and she does zero damage to you, she basically runs out of options really quickly. And if you are the, the superior Tekken player, if you are better at basic movement and decision making, that's when you are going to be able to outlast her, is basically the theory behind all of this. Uh, and so what happens when she's not able to apply her counter hits uh, or she's not able to apply um, uh, you know, frame traps, uh, Katarina becomes uh, entirely reliant on her big lows. Uh, the other option she can use that you do see a lot is she starts doing this command throw, which is a typical uh, standard like 1 plus 2 break command throw. Uh, most characters have a similar option to this. But in particular, characters like Katarina and Lily is a very similar character to Katarina in terms of like the player base being, you know, exploitative people who like very big lows. I like to apply these grabs a lot to break down people who are um, not allowing them to uh, connect with their uh, spam, right? And so you just need to be aware that when you're playing against a, a lowish Katarina and she uh, applies a throw, more often than not, it's going to be the 1 plus 2 break version of the throw or the 1 plus 2 break throw, I should say, so uh, just be aware that you need to break this 1 plus 2. This throw, it will in some situations, I think in this situation right there, yeah, actually give you a wall splat. That's very situational, it depends on like angles and distance, it is not uh, common that you get that wall splat, it is nowhere near as consistent as Kazumi's down for uh, 1 plus 2 throw. Uh, but it but it can happen, so it is slightly less likely to come out when your back is against the wall. So. Uh, basically what I've explained so far and what I've tried to teach like the main thing you need to take away with you is that when you're fighting against Katarina and she's just applying attacks like this all you need to do is be patient and block when you have been patient and you've blocked she is going to start doing big lows and then it's just a question of you being able to crush one of those lows or visually react to or and block one of those lows and if you're able to do that then you're going to launch her and then you're going to uh, win the round right so it's kind of like uh, you need to bait these lows out by being defensive so you play defensively you don't let her hit with you know this move you 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 don't try and interrupt uh, the nimble cutter um, you don't attack after a straight rush uh, and then basically she's going to start doing you know this She's gonna start spamming these, and she's definitely, if you're playing like in the green and, and even yellow ranks, start doing these. And you kind of, in a, in a way, want her to do these, because this is the one though that you can actually consistently learn to block every time. Now it's hard, and good players eat these moves all the time as well, but it is possible. This move is hard to see, and so it's just like a, a big knockdown low that you need to be careful about, but this one you can see, and it's very important that you attempt to do that. And if you uh, still struggle, you know, a great option when you feel like the lows might be coming, start applying your fast mids, right? Be aware of what your fastest mid option is with your character, uh, and start trying to interrupt her lows with this. Um, this move, the full crouch down forward 4, has a very low hitbox. It's kind of art of phoenixy in the way that it can actually go under some mids which is super frustrating. I don't really think there's a, a need for that to exist, but it does, and so that can be annoying. But it's mainly this move that you're really worrying about, and then occasionally this move. And you can see both of them, so uh, be aware of that. All right, is there anything else we need to really address here? Uh, okay, one thing I'll mention is that if you get comboed by Katarina and she decides to end her combo with a Harrier 2, which will happen, um, let's just do like a basic combo here. Uh, okay, let's try this then. 
if she does that ender, that's not Katarina's typical ender, she has better damage options. But when she does that uh, Harrier 2 for her ender, you need to look out for that. And when you see that move come out, uh, or even if it doesn't come out, uh, you can still just hold back when Katarina is applying her uh, combo ender. And the reason for that is that if you don't hold back to do a quick recovery off of this spike, and you get knocked down on the ground, she can get a guaranteed up back four for massive damage uh, on, on the ground. So that is not something that you want to allow to happen. And what you want to do is you want to hold back, then you're going to be able to quick recover. You're going to end up blocking the up back four, and then you can punish her because this is actually a punishable move. And if you're uh, uh, you know, a fast and decent Tekken player, you can even get up really quick and start sidewalking, and you're going to be able to... Uh, maneuver around this move and then you can even apply a launch punish for um, for the uh, the width punish uh, because you can actually uh, sidestep the move if you're uh, recovering with um, back uh, all right so let's see is there anything else uh, she doesn't use her unblockable uh, at all really um, yeah the big lows we talked about that thing it's it's basically it i mean she has a very small move pool but it is good i mean she is a strong character so even when you eat these tools be aware that you know uh when katarina was new she was known as being like a very low tier scrubby character who had to do big lows like this but it turns out a couple of her big lows are actually good and very usable and so the character is strong and uh it is not odd to feel frustrated when you're playing against her but when you're uh playing against these sort of very uh Explorative spammy shitty Katarina's online take a deep breath and block her try and uh, Predict when she's gonna get uh, um, Angsty and start applying her big lows out of panic and when she does that block her uh, launch her And you're gonna be able to beat her a lot easier, and that's basically the way you have to do it against this character I mean one four comes out a lot, but that's just you no know, a lot of characters have a quick low out of a jab you can uh, predict and block this, it's completely possible, but it's hard because it's so quick. Uh, but but you know, her low her lows that aren't big knockdown lows, like down 3 and 1-4, this is like basically what she has, and then she has like a generic down 4, right? These are very benign lows, they're not dangerous, they don't do a lot of damage, right? Uh, so uh, her, she has like very small, very sort of uh, generic uh, low damage, low pokes, and then she has launch punishable big lows, and they're all launch punishable. And so learning how to block them and learn to predict them, blocking them, and then consistently applying your launch punish from Crouch, guys. I don't uh, know if this is something you're struggling with at the moment. If you find yourself blocking lows, uh, especially big lows and not applying a correct uh, while standing launch punish like this is Katarina's while standing too, which is a fantastic move that I love But uh, unless you're playing some very few specific characters You're gonna be able to launch this consistently with your character and so uh, Be sh make sure that you do that because if all you do is you block and you give them a uh, while standing four or something That's like a 15 damage versus uh, you know uh, I think you know off of this launch I could probably get something like um, 70 damage with Katarina, so uh, That's a big difference Every single time you block one of Katarina's low you need to make her pay for it dearly with a lot of damage So you need to apply the launch because if she's only gonna eat like a 15 damage while standing four uh, Then her high risk high reward move uh, all of a sudden becomes a uh, Lower risk high reward move and then she becomes very difficult to beat so that's going to uh, wrap up this little guide on how to beat online Katarinas. Uh, I know it's frustrating, but try and stay patient and you'll do fine. I believe in you. Uh, now I'm going to go celebrate my birthday. Uh, thank you so much for watching. I'll make uh, new videos on the other characters that I want to talk about very soon. Uh, I hope you have uh, a great day. Uh, thank you so much for watching and bye-bye. Uh,